How's everybody doing? Good. I'm going to try not to sit up here and ramble a whole lot, but before we get started, I do want to recognize some people here. So um, if you are current or prior law enforcement, EMS, fire, or military, please put your hand up. I would like to give all of these men a round of applause. Because the simple truth is, none of us would have the freedom that we have if not for them keeping us safe from chaos and crossing that line and putting themselves at risk. So thank you. Give you a little bit about my history. Um, from the time I was about four years old, I realized that I wanted to be either a soldier or a police officer. And I was fortunate enough to recognize and realize both of those. I joined the Army at age 17. I was in until I was 20. Uh, I moved to Illinois the following year, which was 1990. I'm old. Uh, started in the big village of Kansas for law enforcement in 1991. It was very exciting. I worked part-time in Oakland as a police officer, and eventually I started full-time in my career in 1995 at the Coles County Sheriff's Department. There's a lot of familiar faces here, so it's awesome seeing this. It's like a little family reunion as such. Um, it is a good thing. It's a good thing. Everybody's still upright and animated, so it's good. Um, I ended up finishing my uh, police career. I transferred up to Champaign, uh, worked for the city of Champaign until 2009. Uh, during that time, however, I had my share of ups and downs with my fitness. When I was working down here, I, um, I worked at the task force for a couple of years. And when you're doing that, if you're not familiar, it's not like you see on TV where everything happens in an hour and it's done. Unfortunately, you spend long periods of time uh, sitting on your food uh, and watching people and hoping that something happens, which in effect resulted in me ballooning up to about 260 pounds. And it wasn't a good 260 because when you're the biggest guy on the team, you're the guy that gets to carry the ram and knock the doors down when you get search warrants. So on one such day, we were serving a warrant over in Mattoon and um, I had about 40 pounds of kit on with the armor and the helmet and carrying a 30 pound vest and I weighed 260 pounds, sprinted across the parking lot, ran up a flight of stairs and I was so winded I couldn't swing the ram to hit the door. Not a good thing when you're the ram guy, right? Uh, one of the other guys on the team grabbed the ram, hit the door, I literally collapsed against the side of the building and sat there while they went through and cleared the building and fortunately there was no gunfire. Back at this time, I should also add, it was the peak of the meth epidemic down here. And just about every place we went into had video surveillance and guns. So I had let my teammates down because I was not fit. And I decided right then and there that it was time to do something different. So not being super educated in nutrition or fitness, I started riding an exercise bike at the sheriff's department twice a day. I'd go in and ride at 5 in the morning again at 6 in the evening, and I'd drop some weight. Uh, it was, it was good. It helped. I felt a little better, but you know, when you go make a salad because you think you're supposed to eat salad, right? Cause that's how everybody loses weight, eat salad. But then we got to put croutons on it and cheese and salad dressing. Otherwise it tastes like, <laughs> so, you know, you doctor it up and before you know it, you've got something that's relatively healthy and it's no good for you. But life goes on. Um, a couple of years later, I transferred up to Champagne PD and I really wanted to get on the SWAT team up there. I was on CRT down here. I was one of the first original members of the SWAT team, which we didn't have the strictest standards for health there, but up in Champagne, they're in business a little bit different. So I was about 40 pounds overweight. There was no way in hell I could run a mile and a half in 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Who does that anyways? Because running's just stupid. Um, <clears throat> but I wanted to get on the team. So I was living in Charleston, commuting up to Champaign, and on comes this infomercial one morning for this program called Power 90. You guys ever heard of that one, Beachbody? There's this guy, Tony Horton, standing on the beach with his shirt taped to his chest, and he's talking about this awesome fitness thing, and I'd never bought anything from an infomercial program ever. For whatever reason, I decided to buy it, and despite myself, over the course of 90 days, I dropped 40 pounds by doing this program on TV and changing the way I ate a little bit. At day 80, we had our SWAT test. I ended up passing the test, rolled on to SWAT up there. And then I kind of started to get how important this fitness thing was. So I started doing other programs from Beachbody. And at that same time, I started coaching people online. So people that were like me that kind of wanted a direction, weren't really sure where to go, 
we had message boards through Beachbody. It was back before MySpace and Facebook and Instagram and everything else that we have now for social media. And I really fell in love with helping people because my goal all along from the time I was a kid, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to be positive and help people change their lives for the better. So I kind of immersed myself in programs. I did one after the next, after the next, after the next. Before long, I started going to Tony Horton's fitness camps. And we became pretty good friends. And then in 2006, I got a call from a guy named Carl Deichler, who was the CEO of Beachbody. And he said, hey, we're putting together this network marketing business, or MLM. And we'd like to bring you on as one of the 41 founders for this opportunity. And let me tell you, I knew absolutely nothing about marketing. I knew how to drive fast, punch people in the face, and I was really good at both of those things. Marketing, I had no clue what I was doing. But I went out there, I heard this pitch. They put us up in the Beverly's Wilshire, or Beverly Wilshire Hotel, right down in Beverly Hills. It was pretty cool. I had no idea what they were talking about with these charts and graphs and everything else they put up on the screen, but I knew that their programs made a difference in my life and I was healthier as a result of it. And I literally plunked down my last credit card that I had any money left on. I should also add that I was divorced, which also meant I was broke. <laughs> and uh, I signed up for this thing, and I got back to Champaign, and I probably vomited on more people than I should have and talked more people out of the business than into the business, but I was passionate and I knew it worked. Over the course of about two years, I parlayed that part-time into a six-figure income which didn't suck when you're used to starting to work overtime in October every year so you can buy your kids Christmas presents, right? Anybody else relate to that? So I was fortunate enough um, to build a successful business with it. And ironically, I went through most of my career relatively unscathed. I had a, a couple of what I would call knockdown drag out fights that had I not been in shape that I was at the time, I may not be here today. Um, in 2006, I had my first gunfight, which I survived. In 2007, I had a second one. And I didn't really mind doing that part of the job. I knew it was a risk that was there, but the fallout through the media that likes to make up stories having no basis or knowledge kind of grated on me. And as it turns out, when you shoot people, you get sued. So they were both good shoots. I was indemnified by the department. Those finally cleared in 2009. And I had had enough of doing that. And instead of coming into an environment greeted like this, I came into a great environment where I was greeted like this with the fitness side, which is a lot better. So it just kind of took off from there. Um, I immersed myself in the coaching opportunity, but there was still something missing for me when it came to the fitness business. And I was fortunate enough last year to team up with a company called Brute Force out of Arvada, Colorado. And what they do is they make these real heavy-duty sandbags that you can use for training. You can throw them around. And I teamed up with them because I created a stress shooting course for law enforcement. Uh, it was something that was needed within the community. And uh, those of you that may be familiar with law enforcement, for years it was you walk up to this line static, you punch out, you shoot three rounds in the paper in six seconds or 10 seconds or 12 seconds. Well, in the real world, any of you been in a gunfight? Yeah, that's not how it works, right? You, you, you go from a heart rate of maybe 60 or 70 up to 190. You're, you get tunnel vision, your hands shake, your fine motor skills dissipate. And a, there's also a cool thing when you're pulling the trigger called audi, auditory exclusion, so you can't actually hear the rounds going off. But using these sandbags, I was able to replicate that physiological response that happens in the real world in a gunfight. So fast forward a little bit from that, I've been traveling all over the country doing that. Um, I created just recently a uh, home fitness program for law enforcement that will be coming out in April. Uh, 15 to 30 minute workouts, intense stuff, which kind of leads me into the next part of this speech, which is talking about overall fitness and health as, as a guy, right? Because let's face it, we, we don't really like to fix things until we have a major problem, right? So by a show of hands, how many of you in here have a mother or father or grandparents that had heart disease. Keep them up. Diabetes. Okay. Well, guess what? Your mom and dad got together and they had sex and they made you, so you have their problems times two. Right? For years, 
Both of my parents were not in very good shape. They didn't exercise. My dad was grossly overweight. Despite my best efforts of encouraging him to exercise and change his diet, he wouldn't do it, even though he had seen the success I had with it. And I thought that because of how hard I train and because of what I do, I would not have the problems that they had and I wouldn't end up having any kind of health issues. I'd live to be 118 years old and live a happy life and outlive everybody around me. But then, a few months ago, a good friend of mine named Brian Marvin, some of you might know him, he retired from the Sheriff's Department. He's a guy I used to work out with. He eats right, he trains his ass off, and he had a heart attack. And it was a real wake-up call for me because I thought, you know, here's a guy that does everything right. He's doing the things he's supposed to be doing, and this happened to him. And then I started talking to my mom, who's still living. My dad is deceased. And I found out that my grandparents on both sides had heart disease and diabetes. And my cousins have heart disease and diabetes and thyroid problems. And I said, this could be problematic. So I called my doc and I said, I think I need to have a stress test done because my family history is such that I'm starting to think maybe I can't outrun this genetic bullet. My doc said, I could give you a stress test right now and in the shape that you're in and as hard as you train, you could walk out, go home, sit down in front of your TV and have a heart attack. It's not going to show anything. And she, like the doc talked about, said, I'd like to do an ultrasound of your carotids and see what we see. So they scheduled the appointment. I went in and found out that my carotid arteries were uh, narrowed. I didn't have any plaque in the arteries, but they were narrowed dramatically. And for my age, it put me in the 90th percentile for risk. Now, for those of you that know me, I train my ass off. I am a psycho in the gym. I eat clean. I do the right things. My doc said, this appears to be caused by inflammation. And I said, OK, well, what exactly does that mean? And she said, it's probably dietary. She said, do you drink? I said, do fish swim? <laughs> I like whiskey. Yes, I drink. So unfortunately, I had to cut way back on the amount of alcohol. I cut down on the sodium. And she put me on some over-the-counter supplements that help with reducing inflammation within the body. So that was about three months ago. I go three more months and then I get the test again. And my purpose for talking about all this is not to scare anybody, but it is to tell you if you have a family history like I have and you're putting it off until you have the grabber, get in and see your doc and get the test done that you need. Because as a result of this, my doc told me with what I've got going on, it's reversible. It's not something that's necessarily going to end my life prematurely. But had I not done that and I stayed on the same path that I was on, who knows what would have happened. We, as guys, we have to stop being ignorant about our health and we have to take it seriously. Every single person in this room needs exercise. Do you have to do crazy stuff where you're doing, you know, hour and a half a day in the gym? I tell people 20 to 25 minutes, five days a week. If you work out three days a week, you may as well throw yourself down a flight of stairs because you're going to get sore as hell, but you're not going to see results. Okay? Five days a week, 20 to 25 minutes. You got to do cardiovascular stuff and you have to do weights. Anybody in here done P90X plus, P90X2, P90X3, 22 minute hardcore? I'm a cast member in all of those workout videos. And right now I probably look like I ate that guy because I changed the way I train. When we filmed those, I was 180 pounds. I walk around now about 230, but my training is completely different. I like to look up, pick up heavy things and put them down. And I do it with heart velocity and force. And training with my audience, that's what works for me. But that doesn't mean I'm not in shape. Again, referencing like the doc talked about. How many of you guys watch the UFC? You know who Roy Nelson is? Big, fat He is conditioned, and he's got a motor on him to go all day long. But his diet sucks, which is why he looks like he does. And here's the unfortunate thing. We all look the way we do because of what we put in our food hole. Because you can't out-train a shitty diet. That's just the truth. And I apologize for the cursing. I'm really trying to keep this PG. I haven't dropped an F-bomb yet, have I? <laughs> all right. I'll apologize in advance if it happens. Sometimes I get it. an out-of-body experience, if you what I'm saying. So train five days a week. What do I do? Well, personally, I hate running. People say, what do you do for cardio? I say, I lift weights faster. You know? And to an extent, that's true. I, I lift heavy sandbags and throw them around. I do mixed martial arts conditioning stuff. I, I punch a heavy bag. I work battle ropes. I run short sprints with parachutes. Notice I said short. 
because running long is not good for me. Um, you gotta find what it is that you enjoy and don't be afraid to try different things. There's nothing that says you have to run to get in shape. There's nothing that says you have to lift like an Olympian to get in shape. But you have to do something that's gonna get your heart rate up for 20 to 25 minutes, five days a week. And if you do that, you'll be, it, you do that and you combine that with cleaning up your diet just a little bit. I'm not talking about quick drinking whiskey all the time. Brad's relieved. I'm talking about maybe cut down to drinking twice a week or two drinks a night instead of a fifth, whatever it might be, right? Clean up your diet. We all know what's healthy food, right? You go to the, by the way, this is gonna make some people sad. You know, you, you, you go to the store and they have this about net carbs. It only has four net carbs. Well, guess what? It's the total carbs that count because a carb is a carbon at the end of the day. It's there. Guess what? Your ultra light beer <laughs> has more carbs in it than what you think it does right? I don't have a beer belly, I have a whiskey belly, but that's just my choice. So read the food labels, pay attention. If you try and think back to how your grandparents ate, right? They ate what came from the earth and what they raised. Do you know how many ingredients are in a Doritos fire chip? Anyone? 44. How many things are in an apple? It's an apple. Blueberry. Asparagus, Brussels sprouts, you know, red meat, I cut back a little bit on the red meat I eat, but I still like a big slab of tasty cow every now and again. Pork, lean proteins, healthy fats, you know, variety of different nuts. That's the stuff that's going to make a difference in your life. So the other thing I want to say is how many guys here are in their 20s? Anybody? Okay, we've got a couple kids. You can do whatever the hell you want for the next 10 years. <laughs> Don't worry about it. How many guys in your 30s? 40s? 50s? 60s? 70s? 80s? Okay, 80s? You guys do whatever the hell you want to. <laughs> Anybody over 80? Over the 80s? 90s? I feel like I'm 90. <laughs> I used to feel like I was 92, so I, I'm right there with you. Here's the thing, you guys that are in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, the things that you do now are directly going to affect your quality of life your last five years on this planet. If you want to be able to go out and live your life and interact and play with your grandkids and chase your wife around, by the way, sex is a great form of cardio, in case anybody's wondering. It's better when you have somebody to enjoy it with you, but, it, you know. <laughs> if you can't, then you can't. That's just how it goes. The things you, you do, like sure, I'll write you a note if you want one. <laughs> that threw me off there, I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> the things you do now are going to directly affect that quality of your life. I would rather be up and doing things and moving around and be mobile than be like my dad was in a hospital bed, hooked up to a bunch of tubes with zero quality of life and wondering when the day was gonna come. We all meet that end, right? But to an extent, if we can do something to improve that and maybe change that outcome, isn't it worth it? Every head should nod, yes, it's worth it. So I'm gonna wrap this up. You all know what you need to do. Does anybody have any questions? Sir. You have Super Walmart, right? Everything. You have Aldi's? Yeah. They have produce sections there where they have these things called vegetables. <laughs> so the thing with vegetables is figuring out how to prepare them. Like for me, I'm not a big vegetable guy, but if I take broccoli and I put a little bit of salsa, low sodium salsa on there, it makes a world of difference for me. The other thing that you mentioned, and I'm glad that you did, um, complications from diabetes can also cause heart issues. Is that correct, Doc? So if you've got one problem, you're probably going to lead into the other. And for me personally, you know, my doc has told me before I needed to watch what I ate because I don't want to end up taking a bunch of pills. 
you know, the doc mentioned supplements in his, in his uh, presentation. And one of the things I get, I guess asked this all the time, Mark, what supplement should I take? And my question back is, how is your diet? Well, what do you mean? I said, what are you eating? Let me see what you're eating for five days. Use, there's an app called MyFitnessPal. You download it. You track everything you eat. And I tell people, I don't care if you eat a box of Twinkies. Put down that you ate a box of Twinkies so I can get an honest look into what your diet is. From there, a lot of times if you just clean up what you're eating, you may not need supplements. The only thing I typically recommend across the board to people is a good multivitamin. And you don't have to go out and buy the Ultra Men's whatever from GNC that makes your pea fluorescent green. Just a regular standard multivitamin that covers it. Because the fact is with the processing we have in our foods now, we don't get a lot of those things. And then from there, it depends on what a person's goals are individually. If you're wanting to lose weight, your diet's going to be different. Like, I want to maintain my weight. I'm going to eat drastically different from how you are. So based on whatever your goals are, that's the first thing to come up with. You know, people start and stop workout programs all the time. Why does that happen? Because they didn't first come up with a why. So if it's because I want to look cool when I go to my 40-year class reunion, that's great. That's like putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. Right? You need something deeper, like I want to be around to play with my grandkids. I want to walk my daughter down the aisle when she gets married. That's something that's significant enough that's going to pull you back in on the days that you don't want to work out, or you don't want to eat right, or you don't want to do it. Because we all have those. Then from there, you come up with a goal. And be specific in your goal. Not, I want to lose some weight. I want to lose 35 pounds, and I'm going to do it by this date. And then you write it down. Because if you don't, it's just in your head and it can go away. So you write it down, it makes it real, and then you tell the people around you in your circle what your plans are, what your goals are, why you're doing it, and give them permission to hold you accountable. And then don't get pissed at them when you're sitting on your ass eating Twinkies and they tell you to get up, get that out of your mouth, and go get in the gym. Okay? So once you have that, you have your goal, now it's time to come up with your training modality. I like to lift heavy stuff. If I tried to lose weight, that doesn't work for me. When I got called to do 22-minute hardcore, which was our latest beach body program, I was walking around at the same weight I'm at now because this is where I feel good. Tony said, I need you to get in shape if you want to be in this workout series. To me, I know Tony well enough, that means I need to lose weight. I said, what's the number? He said, you know, it's not about the weight, it's about being fit. I said, okay, I know what that is. He said, no, I mean Navy SEAL level fit. Okay. I switched from lifting heavy to doing more of a cardio based with endurance on weight. And I went from eating probably 34 to 3,600 calories a day down to about 2,100 calories a day, which sounds like a lot, but what I, all I really did was reduce the number of carbohydrates I was taking in and increase the amount of protein. I cut that weight in four months. I could do it again tomorrow if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Okay. So that's how you're going to find your success in whatever it is that you want to do. And if you don't know how to do it, you guys can hit me up. You can find yourself a trainer and, and get information from them. By the way, if you're seeking out a personal trainer, if they don't do an evaluation to find out where you are, what injuries, what limitations you have, then go find another trainer. Because it should be about you, not about them. The goal is a trainer. My goal with everybody that I take on as a client is to teach them everything I know and make myself obsolete. And that's how it should be. Any other questions? I'm sorry, that was a long-winded response to your short question. I told you guys I talk. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, I had a heart attack in uh, September, and since then I've gone about 80% vegan. And mm -hmm. then I've worked my way up to three hours or more, high-intense, low-weight cardio at the gym, and I put one hour cardio in with that three hours. Do you think I'm hurting myself? Since you mentioned maybe 25-minute workout? The, the default on that would be to check with your doctor first. Were you grossly overweight when you had this heart attack? Um, I, I was definitely obese, but uh, yes, I tried to okay. a lot of weight. So, and that's good. So I would say based on, and you did this with your doctor's supervision, right? Mm -hmm. So based on, based on that, I don't think you're hurting yourself at all. It really depends what your ultimate goal is. Uh, if you're wanting to add muscle mass, then you're not going about it the right way. But for what it sounds like you're wanting to do, it sounds like you're doing exactly right. I, I feel great. That's what it's about. And that's the other thing, and I'm glad you mentioned the vegan diet. There's so many different diets out there, okay? Don't, get fall, don't fall into this trend. Any diet that significantly reduces or eliminates any of the macronutrients, 
protein, carbohydrates, and fats, it is temporary because eventually you're going to go back to eating. The Fatkins diet that was really, I'm sorry, Atkins that was really popular a few years ago where everybody cut out carbohydrates and all they did was eat protein and fat, they lost a ton of weight. Guess what happened? It's not sustainable. You can't do that for the rest of your life because your body needs carbohydrates. The new big craze is keto, right? High fats, moderate protein, almost no carbohydrates. You know, that was actually created back in the early 1900s to help people with seizure issues. That's where that came from. And now they've spun it back around so that you can lose all this weight. And people lose weight with it, but good luck sticking to it. I know a lot of people that do it and they drop the weight. And if you're getting ready for a photo shoot and you're a model, that's fine, do it for two weeks. But you've gotta, you've gotta keep things moderate. And I'm not suggesting you cut out all the fun to eat stuff in life either because you can't live too rigid. You have to enjoy this. We only get one time on the ride. Any other questions? I shortened that one up, didn't I? Nobody? All right. Well, I'd personally like to thank each and every one of you for coming and listening to me up here. Uh, give the doc another round of applause, if you would, please. He had some great information. And I'll be hanging around. If you guys have any questions, don't feel, free, you know, feel free to come up and ask.